What do you mean by a forward converter? My name is Rishi Ramju and welcome back to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let me ask you guys the obvious question. What do you actually mean by the term forward converter? Well, let's find out. Well, a forward converter is a type of DC to DC voltage converter. That is, it converts one form of DC voltage to another form of DC voltage. But here, a forward converter makes use of a transformer for the purpose of this conversion of DC voltage. So here, a forward converter can act both as a buck converter as well as a boost converter. But here, the difference between a forward converter and a flyback converter is that the difference mainly comes in the circuit. Well, what is the difference for that? Let us draw the circuit diagram of a forward converter. So first, we'll have a voltage source, say Vs, like this. This voltage source is then connected to the primary winding of a particular transformer. This then is connected to a particular switch, which then is connected to this particular voltage, thereby completing the circuit. And now here, where there is a primary winding, there must also be a secondary winding like this. So therefore, this thus is a transformer. This then is connected to a particular diode like this, which is then connected to an inductor, which is then connected to a capacitor like this, and it completes a circuit like this. Here, a particular diode is also provided like this. A diode is provided here. And it is here where a particular load resistance is connected, across which the output voltage V0 is obtained. So let this be R, let this be C, let this be L, and let this be D1 and D2. So here, in this transformer, both these windings have got the same polarity. That is, their windings are in the same polarity. And therefore, to denote that, we are putting the dots over here like this. So using dot convention, this states that they both have the same polarity. So here, the difference in this circuit with the flyback converter is that here we have provided an extra inductor over here and a diode over here. So now let us see the working of this particular forward converter. First case, let us assume that the switch is in the on condition. Now when the switch is in the on condition, we know that a primary current starts flowing like this. So a primary current starts flowing like this, but here this particular primary winding of this transformer acts as an inductor and therefore an energy starts building inside the magnetic field of this particular winding thereby creating a polarity of plus minus like this and therefore it starts getting charged. So here since this polarity is induced here because they both have the same dot convention the same polarity will be induced onto this winding of the transformer according to mutual induction property of a transformer and therefore as a polarity like this is induced over here current starts flowing in this particular circuit and therefore a current starts flowing like this, this, this and it flows through the inductor and some amount of current will flow through the capacitor whereas some amount of current will flow through the resistor. So in the previous video when I explained flyback converter, there what happened was the capacitor was charged first and then this capacitor was used to provide a voltage to the resistor. But here in the on condition itself, current is passing through both the capacitor and the resistor and therefore from start itself we will obtain an output voltage V0. Here the polarity of this output voltage would be plus minus like this and the charge developed over here would be plus minus and the polarity of this particular inductor would be plus minus. So as the current flows through this outer loop like this, it flows here, here, here and it flows back like this and it would complete an outer loop like this. As it flows, this particular inductor will also start getting charged and therefore energy would start getting built inside the magnetic field of this inductor and therefore it starts building up energy inside this inductor. So the energy starts getting stored inside this particular inductor. Next, let us assume that we are turning off the switch. Let us turn off this particular switch. So therefore, while the switch is turned off, what we observe is that the primary current will not flow over here. The primary current will not flow. There will be no current flow over here because the circuit is open when the switch is off. So therefore here, this particular polarity of this inductor would get reversed. 
here this would be minus and this would be plus and therefore the same polarity would be induced over here which is minus plus but when the same polarity is induced here what you observe is that this circuit cannot be completed because this diode is in the reverse bias condition so therefore current will not flow here like this but on the contrary here the polarity of this particular inductor gets reversed and becomes plus minus so therefore this inductor has a polarity of plus minus and this capacitor also has a polarity of plus minus and therefore both this inductor and capacitor starts discharging current like this and this current would flow through this particular resistor thereby creating an output voltage V0. So it would flow like this and it would complete the circuit like this because this diode is in the forward bias condition so therefore current starts flowing through this particular loop. So here therefore what we observe is that when this particular switch is both on and off a particular output voltage is obtained across this particular load and here the polarity doesn't change the polarity is same that is whatever polarity we had at the voltage source the same polarity is obtained at the output for both the conditions when the switch is off as well as on condition. So this thus is the basic working of what you refer to as a forward converter as simple as that. Next let us see the waveforms that are associated with a particular forward converter. So first let us plot the waveform for the output voltage V0. So when the switch is in the on condition we saw that a primary current starts flowing through here and a mutual induction happens and therefore an output voltage V0 is obtained which is the same polarity as the input voltage and therefore a particular output voltage like this is obtained. And next when the switch is turned off what we observe is that this particular inductor and capacitor starts discharging and provides an output voltage here V0 which is of the same polarity of this particular Vs. So therefore the same V0 also happens here. Again when the switch is turned on the same V0 happens here and again when the switch is turned off the same V0 happens here. So this is the case of an ideal situation. There might be some spikes or some irregularities in this particular straight waveform that we get. So in order to get the straight waveform, it is actually gettable. All we have to do is we have to just adjust the capacitance value or the inductance value in order to get it straight like this. If we do that by changing the value of this particular capacitor, we can obtain a straight constant DC source at the output like this. So this is the output voltage V0. Next let us see the value of the primary current that is this current that flows here okay so the value of the primary current IP so here as the switch is turned on what we observe is that in the inductor the primary current starts increasing from a minimum value to a maximum value like this and when the switch is turned off we saw that no primary current flows in this particular circuit because the switch is turned off the circuit is incomplete or circuit is broken so therefore no primary current flows here therefore we get zero primary current. Again when the switch is turned on we saw that there is an increase in the primary current like this and again when the switch is turned off there is no primary current flowing here. So this is the waveform that we obtain by analyzing the primary current. Next let us see the waveform for the current that flows through the inductor. So here what we observe is as the switch is turned on this particular transformer induces a voltage here and therefore current starts flowing here and the current starts building or rising from a particular minimum value to a maximum value like this. And now when the switch is turned off this particular inductor starts discharging that is current reduces from a maximum value to a minimum value. Again when the switch is turned on the current increases and again when the switch is turned off the current decreases like this. This is the value of the inductor current for this particular inductor. So these are the basic waveforms that we obtain for the purpose of a forward converter as simple as that. So guys this thus sums up what you refer to as a forward converter as simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a forward converter and we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming video. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, until next time I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.